Welcome to AP Physics 1. In this video, I want to briefly go over what this course is really about. In the follow-up video, I'll talk about how we're going to navigate this course as it is an independent study. AP Physics. What is physics really about? Physics is the study of matter and energy. How things move, why things move. I love studying physics because when I look at the world, there are certain ways that everything works. There's these invisible laws of nature that can't be violated and that are always working 100% of the time. When I learned that these laws are the laws of physics, I was astounded. When I first studied physics, I enjoyed being able to use math and science together in order to understand how the world worked. And I liked it because mathematics to me has always been this natural language. No one created it. it. It was discovered. We discovered how math could work. And so we're able to use this natural language to get to know the entire world, entire existence. So to me, it's always been like the way I get to know a friend, a new person, is using words to get to know their life and the things that they like to do. So when I study physics, I feel like I'm using this natural language of math and science in order to understand everything. And I feel like, as I learn more about physics, I'm really getting to know God. It's my own personal worship. And so, in this course, we'll be studying a few specific parts of physics. I've got a course outline here, and this is going to cover the what's, the facts that we'll be learning about. This is a unit outline. Some of these will be longer, some of these will be shorter. But we're going to start our journey in kinematics. Kinematics is really all about the study of motion. We'll be able to make very accurate predictions about one-dimensional and two-dimensional motion. We'll be able to look at how a projectile moves through the air, and you'll actually see that it's not as hard as it looks. And using some very simple physics, we'll actually be able to do things that usually look astounding, that make us look incredibly smart, and you'll understand this on a fundamental level. So this course outline outlines specifically what we'll be learning about. Other big topics that we'll cover will be studying energy. We'll learn about mechanical energy and how all energy is able to move and be contained in things like motion or things like gravity. We'll learn about momentum. We'll learn about harmonic motion and we'll learn about circular motion. We'll learn about electrodynamics, how charges move and flow, which will allow us to learn about circuit analysis. We'll be able to learn how most of our modern world is put together, the fundamental aspects of it. Finally, we'll learn about waves and sound. We're going to learn about fields and forces in this class, and I'm excited. But we need to understand what's behind the what's that we'll be learning. So as this is an AP class, there are certain practices that go along with it. These are the science practices. These are the main skills that we're really going to be developing over the course of physics. You may not be good at any of these yet. You might see one go, oh, I, I know how to do that. I'm pretty good at that. But we're going to be growing in all of these. Some are more important than others. So let's go over these skills. The first one is modeling. Modeling is being able to represent some kind of scientific phenomenon using drawings, using graphs, using data, using equations, or even just being able to describe it with our words. So a model is really a way to communicate something happening. Let's say a baseball flying through the air. Maybe we can make a drawing and a little diagram to show how this motion occurs and how it can be analyzed. The second practice will be mathematical routines. This is going to be one of the most significant in this class. We will be using math to investigate real-life motion. And so part of that will be being able to share the relationships between certain variables. Are these variables directly proportional, inversely proportional, things like that. We'll also be doing a significant amount of math in order to explain phenomena. We'll be able to learn how gravity works, how it functions, what are the limitations of it, and what are the factors that it depends on. Our third practice will be scientific questioning. This is going to be relevant, but it's not going to be as big as some of the other ones. Scientific questioning is really going to be all about 
being able to ask relevant questions, being able to wonder why. Wait, why does this work that way? What would happen if we blank? So scientific questioning is really all about being able to ask questions that can lead us to answers. Practice four will be experimental methods. In this class, we will be doing a few different experiments, and we will be using those experiments to derive equations and relationships. And so these experimental methods will be fairly prevalent. Practice five will be data analysis. And while this is a pretty significant point, it's not going to be one of our biggest. We're going to be analyzing data, but a lot of the ways that we analyze that data will be through our experimental methods and through our mathematical routines. Practice six is tied with mathematical routines for the biggest, most important practice. It's going to be argumentation. This is going to be our ability to explain why something happens. To be able to say, well, this is a system, and in this kind of system, energy must be conserved. To be able to explain why a ball might bounce to a certain height. We'll need to be able to reference and explain things using real laws of physics. Finally, practice seven is going to be making connections. We are going to cover a fair bit of ground here, and a lot of what we cover is going to be very interconnected. When we discuss circular motion, we'll be making connections back to linear motion and projectile motion. When we discuss fields and gravity, we'll be able to make connections between that and Coulomb's law, which is going to be our basis for electrodynamics. So we'll be able to make all of these very broad connections throughout the course. We'll be able to relate things on a microscopic level with a macroscopic level. We can look at the orbits of planets as well as the orbits of electrons. So these are scientific practices. So let's move on from here and let's look at this page. Now this page is in your workbook. And it's going to tell you about how important, how, how heavy are each of these units that will be discussed. You can see kinematics and dynamics. Units one and two, which is going to be about motion and forces, are both going to be weighted pretty heavily. You can see that energy is going to be the biggest unit that we're going to discuss. And you can see that momentum is fairly hefty as well. All four of these will be in our first semester. When we discuss circular motion and gravitation, this is a shorter unit, as is simple harmonic motion, and unit eight, which I've, done, I've termed electrodynamics. Those are short units, so they won't take us very long to get through. But some of the most important things we'll discuss will be in unit four with energy and unit five with momentum. If you can gather the laws that are explained here, and some of the interesting quirks that you'll find in units one and two, you'll be able to do just fine on the AP exam. And finally, let's look at something called the big ideas. We have a way to see how these are going to be present through each unit. In physics, there are these very common overarching ideas. The first one is going to be systems. Whenever we talk about motion, we're talking about what are the things that are moving. And we need to define when things are moving in harmony, when things are moving by themselves, and when things are connected by forces. For example, we might say we're looking at the system of the Earth and the Moon. So we're going to look at how that whole system has an energy conserved in it and how those things are able to move around each other. Or we might talk about the system of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. We might want to talk about the entire solar system as a system and see how that as a whole moves together. Or we might want to zoom all the way in and look at how a football is thrown across a field. Our system in that case might be the quarterback throwing it, the football being thrown, and the receiver catching it. That could be a whole system. We'll be defining our own systems. And we can see those. We'll especially see them in Unit 2, Unit 3. And although there's no check mark here, we will be talking about them in Unit 4 because energy is conserved in certain types of systems. We'll also be seeing them when we discuss electrodynamics and electric circuits. The next one that we want to look at is called fields. Now, fields are a very prominent idea in physics, but it can be a more advanced concept. And so we're not going to dive too deep into fields. We're going to touch them a little bit when we discuss forces in our Unit 2 and when we discuss gravitation in Unit 3. But we're not going to need to take too deep of a dive. Next, we're going to be talking about force interactions. This is going to be a huge point. We're going to talk about Newton's three laws of motion, which will have a lot to do with forces. And we're going to learn about how forces permeate everything. And if we have a good understanding of what a force is, 
and how it works, we can investigate most laws of physics. Those will be prevalent, prevalent all the way through Unit 8. We won't touch them as much in electric circuits, because that'll be the movement of charge, and we won't touch them as much in Unit 10 when we discuss how waves move in a mechanical fashion. Next, we'll be looking at change. Change is a huge idea in physics, and if you take more advanced physics classes, you'll be using a lot more calculus. That's because calculus is the math of change. Now, the AP Physics 1 course is a trigonometry-based course. So we'll be using some sine and cosine, we'll use some Pythagorean theorem, but we won't need to use any advanced math like derivatives or integrals. We'll reference them, and we'll see some hints about what those could look like when you learn about them in the future, but we won't use them in this course. And so when we talk about change, we're going to be looking at it from more of a conceptual standpoint. We'll be using changing variables, we'll be able to look at how acceleration, velocity, and distance change. We'll be able to look at how forces and energy can change. And that will be very relevant through our first semester, which will be 3 Unit 5. And it'll be very relevant when we talk about torque and rotational motion. Next, we're going to have conservation. This is hands down the most important idea in physics. You may remember studying this in chemistry. We learned about the conservation of energy as the first law of thermodynamics. Well, there are a few different conservation laws. There's the conservation of energy, there's the conservation of momentum, there's the conservation of charge. We will be learning about all of these and we will be using them fairly extensively. This will be a very big important point, as conservation laws are some of the most foundational laws of physics. On the AP test, when we're making arguments, we'll often want to reference a conservation law to say, hey, this is why this happens, because momentum is always conserved. So we'll learn about that. Finally, the last big idea we'll just touch on it in our last unit is going to be waves. Waves are another very important idea in physics because it is how energy is able to move through the universe. And so even though we're barely going to touch it, it is a colossal idea in physics. And so we're just going to get to kind of brush the top of it. And the last thing I want to cover in this video is the equation sheet. You will have an equation sheet in your workbook, and this is the exact equation sheet that you'll get on the AP exam. So you'll be able to use this on every single test that we take in this class, because I want you to get used to it. Now, on the first page, we have a few constants. Like proton, neutron, electron, mass, the speed of light, which is 300 million meters per second. We have things like the Coulomb's Law constant, which you don't know anything about yet. The universal gravitational constant, which you don't know anything about yet. We'll also discuss acceleration due to gravity at Earth's surface. This will be a gravitational field. We have the symbols for each unit. We have metric prefixes, so this should allow us to easily convert between meters, kilometers, uh, things like gigaohms, megaohms, kiloohms, things like that. So I will expect that you'll be able to make accurate metric conversions. Then we'll have a trig table, but we usually won't use this. We'll just, we'll just use the trig functions on our calculators. Finally, we have the equation sheet. This might look overwhelming at first, but geometry and trigonometry, you probably are very familiar with all of this already. They're here for your reference. Waves really only has one equation. Electricity, we'll learn these and they'll actually be very straightforward once we do. But most of these mechanics equations are going to be very interconnected. And so when you first look at this, this feels really overwhelming. But once you start to learn some of these, you'll see, oh, wait a minute. These are similar variables. This, this V right here is this V right here, which is this V right here, which is also this V right here. And you might start to see, oh, there's all these equations. They're all related. It's just how these different concepts are related to each other. And so we'll never need to memorize an equation. We'll only need to learn how to use it. So you would learn how to use a hammer. So that concludes our introduction to physics. I'm excited for us to get started. I'm excited for you to learn what I've got here for you. And let's start the next video where we're going to take a deep dive into how you'll navigate this course.